think it's pretty safe to say that intertribal warfare um, helps speed along human evolution. For example, in the last 200,000 years, there's been a steady increase in human cranium size and in the shoulders, muscles, and sockets and joints uh, better adapted for throwing things, probably spears, rocks, whatever. For example, our nearest living relative is the chimpanzee that we share a common ancestor with. Um, has a hard time accurately throwing things. It throws its own feces, but not with amazing accuracy over 20 feet like a human can do. They're pretty good within 20 feet, but they're just they're not as well adapted for throwing things. However, their frame, um, some of the tendons can di uh, connect differently and basically make it stronger than a human being, a weightlifter, would be. My hypothesis would be that warfare between these different uh, roving bands of hunter-gatherers over the last, you know, how long has there been agriculture? 8,000 years at the very most. So you have 192,000 years of competition between these groups. And if agricultural societies, warfares, history of warfare, reflects the basic savagery of the hunter-gatherer societies, I think it's safe to say that the males that were probably the main conductors of this warfare typically slaughtered the males of the tribes they were conquering and took off the females. That would of course result in a lot of selective pressure on the males um, first of all to throw things well which would also be facilitated by the fact that um, the humans that threw things better would better be able to um, kill game as well as each other. Second, um, the communication between apes is mostly hand signals and some grunting and stuff, but as our minds were growing in order to help facilitate the toss of a spear, you know, doing the folk physics, the mathematics in the mind to make that spear land with enough force at a appropriate distance. Um, I think it also facilitated language skills. And those language skills helped these hunters and warriors to better sync up their movements and make war plans and hunting plans and game plans. So both are kind of acting on each other. Fast forward to the present and we have human beings that have too large of adrenal glands and too small of prefrontal lobes to paraphrase Christopher Hitchens. So we now have six billion people on Earth. Our technology has done a fairly decent job of providing enough extra food for everyone on Earth, but it remains to be seen if we can continue this. Our fields are mostly fertilized with petroleum byproducts, things made from petroleum. And as our population continues to expand. So if our resources are not infinite, but our possible population can be, I think we'll see a return to the sort of tribal warfare. In fact, uh, did we ever leave tribal warfare? If you think about it, the war in Iraq, you can, we can debate whether or not it's really about oil, but I think it is definitely about influence in the region. The reason, of course, that we want that influence is because of the resources in the region. What I'm wondering is if you all agree with me that humanity is predisposed to strife and warfare.